For the fathers And all the mothers To all the sisters And all my brothers For the family We gon' make it Till they crack the gates We'll be waiting what inspired you the most to write this song? Was it a particular somebody in your life or it's just everything piled in together that you've been going through? The faux movement. Mm -hmm. Cause like I'm heavily involved with it too. Okay. But like, um, I don't know. It was just like brewing. Like I was like, man, like I want to do something, something for these guys, you know, um, I mean, I was just, yeah, I've, I've written, I wrote so many different types of songs for them, but like nothing felt right. And then I heard that damn beat and then it came with the finally free part. And I was like, oh, well, well there, it pretty much wrote itself. So um, I, I just had to, you know, I had to take myself to a, a, a certain place where I was like, man, like, how how do I write this without coming on too strong? But at the same time, uh, conveying a message. So then I was like, all right, for the first verse, I'm going to write from the viewpoint of the children, the moms and pops, the relatives that are are going in or just, you know, struggling on the outside, you know, try, trying to help whoever's inside. So when I say reminded every minute that this call's being recorded. Like, I was just like, all right, like, now I have to put my, 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 uh, myself in a vulnerable space. I got to write it like me visiting my pops. Because as a child, I'm going to go visit him. But I don't know that there's, you know, there's a bunch of BS going on. I'm just playing with the other kids, you know, like, that are that are just out there because I've seen it before like in your interviews where it's like um when your mom's was like buying food and handing them out and you're telling her like oh you don't know if that dude's trying to kill me or whatever and I was you know same thing with me when I was a kid I was just, just playing with the enemy you know playing with the enemies and not knowing that they're the enemies but you know but just it's just being a kid at heart and then I was like all right yeah. so that's that first first verse and then the second verse was just like, if I could give any advice, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, so uh, the whole second verse is just kind of, you know, telling, telling like, you know, everybody who's been locked up, like, man, we won't understand, you know, it's, you know, but the things that we have in common is the time away from each other. And, you know, when you, when you're going through the years, like, dang, what was I doing at this time? You know, in 90s, you know, you see a picture from 97 or a picture from 2005. And he's like, and then we can tell you what happened and blah, blah, blah. And insecure having different type of flashbacks. So, you know, kind of just giving advice and stuff. So pretty much the faux movement. I was like, man, like, yeah, this is it. This is it. Like, this is what I needed to do for for these guys. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I just penned a paper. I just started started going. So, yeah, but yeah, man, that uh, that first verse is the one that really hit me because I remember my daughter, you know, many times just sitting there and um, setting up the table for us, like putting the paper plates out, the napkins and the plastic forks, getting ready to microwave our whatever burritos or hamburgers and enjoy a meal together. I never thought that, you know, this is something that was truly affecting her. You know, she was being a kid, too, and uh, she's doing all these things. But at the same time, she's not able to go, you know, hang out with her friends on the weekend instead. You know what I'm saying? Because her friends are spending a night at each other's houses or whatever. Or they're going out to have fun at the water slides or whatever it may be. And then holidays, she's spending Christmas in there and things like that. And I remember just feeling like not being able to give my kid you know, the Christmas I wanted to give them or a present or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the things that hurt me, but I never realized the kids, how much it was really, really hitting them, you know, that their father ain't home, their mother ain't home, you know, 
you just think that the kids are playing and having fun. You know what I'm saying? You just think right. about yourself on how you're missing your family. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Yeah. And so when I came home and, you know, I, of course, you see me talking about it, I realized a lot of the uh, things that we've been through, the whole family went through, you know, the, the kids, the, the wife, the husbands, whatever it may be, they all went through it. And um, for you to express that, I don't know if there's anybody that's ever expressed anything like that in a song or anything like that, but you really touched me with that. And I think that a lot of people who have been in our shoes need to really hear that song and hear what our kids gone through. I really appreciate you writing that song a lot. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I ended up listening to a bunch of other songs that you have. Man. <laughs> I have a few favorite ones, man. I'm, I'm still going through them. I finally found you on, what is it, SoundCloud? And uh, I've been going through, and I've just been banging that shit, you know, all <laughs> yesterday, today, you, you know what I mean? So it's dope. You know, I mean, you got a dope ass talent. Uh, what, what, what do you have been playing? I mean, have you talked to any like uh, labels or any managers, or are you trying kind of just doing this on your own? Uh, right, right now, just on my own. Well, I have a, a like a group of friends that we make music together, yeah. but um, and hopefully, you know, it, it blows up. You know, that's, yeah, you know, when they said like, uh, you know, if you're gonna make money, try to do it, you know, while you're doing something you love. Uh, this is something I absolutely love, and it's been a part of my life for so long. I so, can tell. Yeah. somebody, somebody just you know has me a couple bucks just for making music. I'm like, hell yeah. Good we can pay the bills like this. Let's go, <laughs> man. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying my best, you know, yeah. but, th but at the same time, I'm, ha I'm just having fun. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know if it's a, a different type of mentality, but it's like, you know, if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. Yeah. It, uh, as long as I know I'm okay with what I'm putting out and, and it makes the family happy. Cause that's, that's my biggest motivation. I'm just, you know, the fam, like, Hey, if my, my uncle can get inside the car and just turn on the, you know, you know, pop a CD in or Bluetooth, or whatever. And my music's playing and he's just bobbing his head. I'm like, yeah, shit, that was, that was, that was the job. That was the assignment that for him yeah. to just enjoy it. So. That's right. Well, you getting kind of, you getting some recognition. I mean, what you have a, a, a certain <laughs> celebrity recognize your music, right? Uh, corrupt. Yeah, corrupt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Corrupt uh shouted me out. And um yeah, that's that's a big <laughs> that was a big thing because I was like, dang, like what what everybody was the night that happened, everybody was messaging me like, yo, go to corrupt's page and blah blah blah. And I was like, Oh, all right, let me check it out. And I went on there and sure enough, shout out to THT Cyrus. Hey, his music is banging. And I was like, what? Like, wait, 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 wait. why did this happen? You know, whatever. But um, yeah, lucky enough, I was, I was get uh, I was able to get in touch, you know, uh, further with him mm -hmm. and just told me, hey, give it some time. Give it some time. Like, yeah. you may not hear from me next week, next month, probably not till next year, but you know, and I was just like, cool. Like that just lets me know I'm on the radar. Yeah. So that doesn't mean I slow up on my end at all. So I was like, cool. Yeah, man. That's so. a, that's a huge accomplishment. And if, if you think about it, a lot of these artists, you know, like that are coming out, a lot of them, it took 15, 20 years for them to get ready. They were on SoundCloud forever Yeah. before they got recognized, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you ever thought about throwing you probably already did, but you ever thought about throwing your music on TikTok? Um, it's like verified on TikTok, like uh nice. Like if you go on TikTok and you search me up, I'm I'm an artist that's that's, that's on there. So I don't have to create a video with my song to put mm -hmm. it back up. It's like no, like I can just go on TikTok and search and and I'll pop up. I'm going to so, check that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if my music's playing and you like Shazam it or you, hey, Siri, who's who's playing? Mm -hmm. And it'll say, I'll oh, see now my, my my Siri just started acting up. <laughs> but uh, if you do that, like, well, I'll actually uh, I'll pop up. So it's, it's crazy. I, I remember I geeked out the first time I saw that happen because <laughs> my, my, my buddy was just like, hey, yo, Cyrus, like you just popped up on my phone. 
I was like, oh, what's that? You know, what do you mean? He was like, yeah. So my phone tells me what song is playing, like now playing or whatever. Yeah. Sure enough, it said now playing. And it was my cover art with my face and all that. And I was like, hey, yo, that's wild. Like, <laughs> so for, for a minute, I was just walking rocking around and like, hey, but hey, hey, just Shazam this song real quick. Tell me, tell me what pops up. And yeah. Man, that's crazy as hell. Man, that's dope as hell, man. man. Good for you, man. And and see, you you you're moving forward always. So you know it's it's coming. It's coming. Man, eventually. Yeah, it's coming, man. You just keep moving forward, man. That's all you can do. That's what I'm doing in life, man. Just moving forward. Just yeah. like the Usos out there that out there, your uncle and all them, same thing. Pushing forward, man. That's all yeah. it's about, man. You know, um, they they really uh inspire me as well you know, seeing the things that they're accomplishing and even you so young accomplishing so much, it, it inspires me to keep doing what I'm doing today. Cause you know, I have hard times too, you know? And uh, so I really appreciate the hard work all of y'all doing over there down in LA. So you're originally from Santa Ana, right? Originally born in San Bernardino, IE. So probably like 45 minutes more inland, mm -hmm. but after I think I turned three and then I, I moved it uh, to Santa Ana with the rest of my family. Um, yeah, I was, I've, I've, I was there ever since. Like I'm in Vegas now, but. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 I'm in Vegas yeah, yeah. now, but man, I've, but when, when people ask me where I'm from, I always, I'm from Santa Ana. I'm from Santa Ana. Yeah. And it's like being from a place like that, like you're proud. Right. You know, because not everybody's from Santa Ana and it's not every day you hear Santa Ana. So, but especially when you meet other people from Orange County and mm -hmm. they like say out here in Vegas and they'll be like, oh, I'm from a certain side of Orange County. And I'll tell them oh, I'm from Santa Ana and, and they immediately look at you like, oh, OK, that's what's up. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody knows like Santa Ana is pretty much like the hub of oh, or, okay. like back then, like it was, it was the hub of. All Orange the BS. County. Yeah, okay. it was all the BS. That's where it happened. It's like a part of LA. Mm -hmm. It just dropped in the middle of Orange County. Wow. And that's where, if there was any stuff going on. Um, it was there. It it pushed that way. Yeah. But So growing up there, what just kept you away from it? I mean, I know, like I said, you know, we talked about family members going to prison. So what kept you out of prison? What kept you from getting involved with the streets like that um i wouldn't say i i, I stayed away completely mm -hmm. <laughs> but um i don't know what it is it was it was just, just being around it like knowing how to move because mm -hmm. you know granted I, I did a lot of things i wasn't caught for you know i wasn't caught for but it was because i wasn't caught yeah you know i was like hey the object <laughs> of the game is to do what you gotta do and and slip away um, I'll just say I was just good at it, but no, um, it, it was just because all, like all the dirt my family did in the eighties and nineties, like everything that happened, like it fell on us, mm -hmm. the rest of the kids. Cause then once we saw everybody else doing it, like the old OGs and everybody like, we're like, Oh, I'm going to be just like that. Yeah. So my if you ask my family they say the biggest thing with cyrus was fighting like like my it it wasn't me claiming a hood or whatever it was just fighting like it was i was just a knucklehead i was bad <laughs> and ron i it was just wanting to fight all the time just because you know it was just a yeah. sport it's just because and then as as i got older like visiting my pops in prison like you know, my pops went to jail when I was like four. So I grew up without him. And then, you know, my mom's was doing her own thing. So my grandparents raised me. So I was just that badass little kid that was, mm. I was with the grandparents. I go outside, just fighting in the hood and get back into the house and take the ass whooping from pops. So, yeah. and so it was just doing all that. And just over time, you just kind of get over it. Like you're just hmm. tired of it. But I was just like, man, like, why, why, why? <laughs> I'm just going to school, going, going outside, and 
But when what the the one person I'm really sc- scared of is my grandfather, like you know, like yeah. the ass whooping from pops is gonna is a lot worse than the ass whooping I'm gonna get from from anybody out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just over time, you just I just got over it. And like I'm cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it got really bad with me, where then I started taking the route like, all right, I'm just gonna start doing time. I'm just, I'm just gonna whatever. So, uh, uh, like right, right before my eighth grade year, I actually went to go live in Samoa mm. for like a, a summer, just for a summer. Uh, my pops got out, but okay. when he got out, they sent him back. They, they sent him back to the islands. And man, when I got there, it was like, uh, it was beautiful. It was like, man, this is where my ancestors are from. And, you know, me, I just, I, I'm still a kid. I'm only 13, 12, 13. And I'm just telling him, like, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. And my dad was yeah. like, man, everywhere is the beach. We're like, what are you doing? And I was like, nah, man, I just want to go to the beach. Yeah. And then uh, I guess, you know, someone who he's someone who's just fresh out of jail, you know, prison. And so I don't know. I didn't know the whole time he was watching me. And then there were small things that he was, you know, kind of like nitpicking. And he was like, why do you walk like that? Why do you slouch? Why do you do this? Whenever, and the way I took it was, hey, man, why don't you, you know, I'm your kid. Like, why don't you just like me for who I am yeah, or whatever? Chill. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just remember I came back to America. And it bugged me a lot. Like, it was bad. It was, it bugged me a lot. And my grandfather, he was just like, hey, what's wrong? Like, like you're, you, I know, obviously, you lived out there and you, you know, it changes you. But there's something wrong with your, your faku, like your, your mind, too. Like, what's wrong? I told him what happened. And something along the lines of, uh, you know, if I was there, you know, he might he might have been different or whatever. And I was like, what? Like, why would you want me to be different? Like, it's, you know, my, my family loves me. Like, and I think right when I came back to America, uh, full on gang banging. I was just mm. like, yeah. Yeah, that was like, that's that was the trigger I needed. Sure enough. It was placking up on walls, just walking into enemies' hoods with a butter knife in my <laughs> my pocket, <laughs> just, just ready. To, I was like, "Man, I was, I was like, yep, yeah, this, let's, let, let's, let's see how long this lasts before I yeah. I'm in." Um, and then grateful enough, um, you know, you know, with what recently happened, um, my my uncle who just passed away. Um, he actually like saved me and he to he he so where I lived in Santa Ana was like kind of central. Mm-hmm. And the high school I went to, who I, where I ended up going to was way on the south side. Like I I I probably lived further than everybody. But he lived over there. So I ended up using his address to go to the high school that where he was at. And it was kind of like a, a private school, like a fundamental school. Mm. And the school I was going to, or I, my, my home school for where I lived at, that was the school that was like all the enemies that I was, I was beefing with on the streets. And they all went to that high school. And so my family was like, look, like you either go in there or you go, or you're going to, um, you're, you're, you're either going to go where your uncle's at or you're going to stay here, but just know, like, it's only, a, it's only due time before, you know, everything catches up. Yeah. And then, yeah, I got to high school and I was, yeah, I was, still had that attitude, like for me banging on kids with shirts that were all tucked in and everything is, <laughs> it was stupid. <laughs> and, then, and then my family was just like, yo, the, the way I was writing, like you know my 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 notes and everything yeah and they were just like yo like you need to there's something wrong with you kid 
Um, but at the same time, I was I was still going to like, like court hearings uh, mm-hmm. for for. And then finally, my pops like, you know, I don't I don't know what I can do for you. You know, he, he's you know, he's an old man from Samoa and he doesn't know how to teach me how to kind of live out here. Mm. So he just told my uncle, like, can you save my son? And my uncle was like, yeah, like, he's like, but I'm going to have to smack him around a few times because he, you know, until he gets it right. Um, it never came down to that because I just was like, dang, all right. Like, and they're like, look, you're in high school. You can be whoever you are. You don't got to be like everybody else. And I was like, all right, cool. Man, and I just went crazy with the girls and <laughs> in sports and joining clubs. After that, I was like, yo, like, oh, this is what it's like to be be normal. Regular. Yeah. Regular. And I was like, yo. So I was going to school. It was no more Dickies. And, mm. and oh, man, I was with my Dickies, my Chucks, whatever. And, you know, my, my now my jeans started fitting a little more. And I was just like, yo, this is cool. Like, so I graduated high school and all the homies were just like, hey, who's you changed, huh? I was like, oh, man, I just just I had to switch up just a little bit, just a little bit. But nah, it did. Doing that definitely kept me away from. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, it's, I was it was going. I was going the wrong way. It was like it was, rest in it was, love to your uncles, man. I appreciate and, you. Yeah, man. I appreciate him stepping up and doing that, you know, what I'm saying? because it takes a lot for a man to step up for someone else and really love them, you know, and really be there for them and care for their future and things like that. You know, you guys heard me talk about my stepdad and things like, so I kind of understand. I think that uh, I made the same mistake just hearing you uh, with my, my daughter. Uh, when I came home, I, was kind of the same way with her. It was weird when you were saying that I I asked the same questions to my daughter. Why do you act like that? Who are you when you're not around me? And, um, you know, I was just on her about every little thing instead of just coming home and being happy to be home with her and, and the family. Instead, I was pushing the line and, you know, on my whole family, I, I, I was so, I was pretty bad. Was, uh, my whole family be doing burpees, you know what I'm saying? Real yeah. shit. And, um, yeah. you know, I pushed the line. I mean, that's how it was in there. That's how it kept us solid and things like that. And so I don't know what your dad's reasons were, but um, I feel bad for you, what you went through just from that, because that did trigger you and that did send you off into a different direction versus a positive direction. So kudos to your uncle for stepping up for you. Rest in love to him, man. Much love to him. And um, man, you turned out really good, Oos. And I think that your music shows it, who the type of person you are. Because I really got to know you through your music, you know, before we even talk now. And man, and um, I can tell, you know, you were raised by some decent people there and a um, lot of love to you. But like you said, it was a little rough in the beginning. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. And, and you know what? Not everyone your age gets to turn it around. Of course, you know this. You've seen your yeah. friends. You've seen people you know. We, we got, got Usos that are, that are locked up for the rest of their lives. lives. Um, um, so we know what time it is, man. And so, so congratulations, congratulations to you, too, too because, because it's up to you, you at the end of the day to, to put in the work to become the man you are today. today. So, so real talk, talk kudos to you, too, man. You covered the struggles of being a kid, but I wanted to ask you about more about the holidays and the visiting rooms and things like that. And the reason why is because there's going to be some children out there or people that are your age now that went through that or are going through that. My daughter had to lie to her friends and say like, oh, my dad was working or he's in Samoa, he's in Hawaii or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know what you did to, you know, cover up for things like that, if you did it or not. You know what I'm saying? But um, what would you tell other kids who are going through this right now, having to visit their families or even been through it? Like, what kind of advice would you give them to maybe help them along with whatever they're dealing with? Because the parents don't understand. Nobody else, the friends don't. So what would you say to them? And I would just say it's not your fault. You know, everything that happened, 
but you know that that's going on now or or before like it's not your fault and it's not a burden you should have to carry you know yeah like it's there's always going to be like a big void and and my my situation was um the 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 hardest part about visiting the the loved ones um was leaving was was leaving the visiting room that was that was the hardest part that's where the tears came in and um at, at least in my situation you know it's kind of sad to say i got used to it i got used to seeing seeing my my dad in in blues and orange like i i got used to that um but you shouldn't have to um you know it's it's always going to be rough uh but just know that that um love doesn't have like a, a boundary you know like whoever's in there you know they still love you it's just the they have their their own issues to deal with and you shouldn't have to so definitely um just know that it's not your 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 burden to to carry because it, it weighs on you like you know later in life it weighs on you it did with me um but you know i'm i'm in a better space but for those who are young and dealing with it you know it'll pass it'll pass it's gonna you know time's gonna come it's gonna pass but make sure you you voice how you feel mm -hmm. so so there's no uh how do you say like there's the, nothing gets gets uh misconstrued or anything where mm -hmm. they're they're like oh i didn't know you felt like that make sure you you say how you feel you know get it out the way like say how you feel that way when you move a certain way or you're 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 talking a certain way you're acting a certain way at least they know why so yeah definitely you know just and that and just be with your family mm -hmm. Fam family is love man family is love even when you have you go through bad times just know when they, you're you're a child that or someone who's who's you know kind of going through that everybody's going through that mm. it's just you feel how you feel and everybody else is feeling how they feel so yeah just give it time um make sure you, you uh kind of communicate how you feel and stuff bars